Peace. This is Kane Noble Black Supremacy. With this particular video, I want to talk about how you can't be conscious for anyone else. And this really exposes one of the deep aspects of teaching that may appear to be contradictive or hypocritical. Because no matter how much you teach or enlighten others, you cannot be conscious for them. You cannot be their consciousness. Consciousness is self-generated from the essence of the individual. It arises from the individual as their stream of thought, as what they entertain, as what they experience, as them as their makeup of their of the algorithm of their beingness so you can't be conscious for them it'll never happen you can teach them all you want you can you can say all that you want to them but they will still be their own consciousness and will be left to be conscious on their own and that's where a certain amount of detachment comes from with that you must detach from others in a certain kind of a way to allow them to be their consciousness what you call knowledge and information and insight is nothing but your consciousness you impart it to others because you feel that it is valuable that it could help them that they could grow from it but at the end of the day, it's still just your consciousness and it's what you're creating. It's what you're manifesting in the universe and it's what you're experiencing and it's how you want to experience your experience, how you want to experience your experiences. That's your consciousness, how you experience experiencing. You cannot do this for anyone else. Whatever they are experiencing is their consciousness. Everyone is just not under mind control. They're not sleep as so to say or not ignorant as so to say. They are experiencing their consciousness where they're at. And until they journey and travel in that experience of their consciousness, can they get to a different place? Or can they arrive at where you are on their own? But it's up to them and their journey. They have to do it. You cannot become you cannot be conscious for them because you cannot be their consciousness. And that's where compassion arises. That's where compassion comes from when you realize that you can't be nobody's conscious. And you can't be conscious for nobody. So now you have compassion for these souls with where they're at in their journey. Whether they realize what you're saying or not. And even if they're walking into their own illusions, walking into their own creations that might not be uh, the most happiest, happily ever after story that you've heard or want to see them walk into, it is still their consciousness and it's still their experience, which is them at the end of the day. It's what they make, they're made up of. It's the journey of their soul to realizing itself as a, as a created, creative ent entity, as an animated entity. A lot of times we say we want to wake up people from mind control, from society and all of its entrapments and all of its propaganda and its lies. But some people who would seek to make others conscious are doing the same thing. The best you can do for someone in the sense that you cannot be conscious for them and cannot be their consciousness is mind control. Try to control their mind to direct them into a destination that you feel is most beneficent or is the most best place that they can end up and be in their life as far as you see things. That's the best that you can do, but that is not conscious. And when you do that, you'll find at the end of the day that these individuals still are not conscious at all. You have just controlled them to end up into a certain destination that you feel and see is most beneficial for them, that is most whole for them. But that's not enough. Consciousness requires them to become it on their own. It is a choice what we're calling being conscious.
how we have defined consciousness, what we make up as being conscious, is a bundle of choices that individuals make to live a certain type of life and to be awakened in a certain type of way and experience their experiences in a certain kind of way. That leads to bliss, enlightenment, happiness, peace, empowerment, unlimitedness, limitlessness, that they would experience life that would lead them into this particular place. That's what we are calling conscious. That they are aware of who they are and what they can create and what they, mani what they can manifest and they make choices out of their awareness of themselves as being a creative entity. They make choices that reflect that they're not victims or impaired by victim consciousness. They make choices that shows that they are aware of themselves as being creators, as being God, being enlightened entities. So there is a bundle of choice, a bundle of choices that certifies an individual as living in that particular awakened state. What you don't realize is the key word there is choices. And it depends on the readiness of that soul to embark upon that particular journey. It depends on where that soul is at, how far they're on, they're on their spiritual journey. They will not arrive any sooner or any later than that. So you have to realize, you cannot be someone else's consciousness. You can give information, you can give choice, you can give alternative, you can give options, but you cannot be their consciousness. You cannot be the choice for them. You cannot be what clicks for them. You can give them that which would make them click if they're at a certain point. You can give them food if they have reached the level to be able to digest it but you cannot be conscious for them. So teaching sometimes gives the illusion that somehow you can be conscious for someone else. That you said you're bringing consciousness or you have consciousness. Consciousness comes from the self. No one can bring, possess, or have consciousness. It is a self-propelled process within itself. No one can give someone else consciousness. They can give them something to become conscious of but they cannot give them consciousness and they cannot be consciousness for them. They can just be a different perspective, a different route, a different journey, a different bundle of choices, a different perspective, different narrative, different paradigm. So you have to let people be into their own consciousness because that is their own existence. That is their own beingness. That is their own journey. That is their own soul. That is their own freedom. No matter how we may perceive it, condemn it, categorize it, it is them. It is who they are. It is what they must go through to realize themselves. All we can do is offer what we have in a very unconditional, in a very compassionate way. It is offer it to them and love them while they evolve through their process of becoming the consciousness that they really are. Because everyone is not only conscious, but everyone is a particular consciousness that makes up who and what they are and how they experience things and makes their lives relevant and makes them relevant that makes them a them. So we must embrace that as a part of life that no matter how much we love people and how much we care for people we cannot become we cannot be conscious for them. We must allow them to become conscious on their own and allow their consciousness to evolve and unfold the way it needs to while we are focused and centered on our own consciousness and our own awareness of who we are and we are navigating through our own journeys for ourselves. This is King Noble Black Supremacy. Join my website www.kingnobleblacksupremacy.com Donate. Don't hate.